Hey guys, I am so excited to team up with Mitch Quist with Stone Coat Countertop and Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs. We are going to take a few colors. We're each going to create our own design and show you how simple it is to go from one and really make it a wow factor. Bye. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Keith, bud, it's been real nice working with you finally. We just spent all that time in the class. I feel like I've got to know you over Facebook, man. Your work has been fantastic to watch. I appreciate that, Mitch. Check him out on YouTube. Keith publishes sweet little tutorials, beautiful epoxy countertop techniques. Go subscribe and hit that thumbs up. How long have you been in business? Uh, full time, two years. Um, I've been doing this for about three. Man, well, from your advice, feel like you've been doing it longer than I have, man. Keep up the good work well, out there. I appreciate that, Matt. I really do. All right, bro. We're mixed up. Let's get on out there next to Rhonda onto our project, and we're going to start applying some epoxy. Let's do it. I'm pumped. All right, so how we're going to do this, we've already pre-mixed up our colors into the resin. We divided those up into individual cups. We're going to pour this out randomly. We'll each grab a cup. We'll get it all our material out on the project. We'll spread it with our hands, get any of that surface tension out, make that board all the way wet. Then we're going to mix up our accent color, apply that, bring this project to the next level. It's going to look super sweet. Pick a color. What you want, Rhonda? Oh, give me that. Uh, I'll this take that one. one. My bam, bam. favorite brown. I got the brown dye, and <laughs> then we'll put that we'll one on the last. Side. All right, so ready? lead the way, Rhonda, yep. Me? All right. You got this. You lead, we follow. So we made this piece yesterday at Rhonda's epoxy hands-on training class. Kenny teaches how to build life-size, realistic countertops that are gonna go in your house. We don't just make boards on little things. You're gonna learn how to create real countertops. We have two separate edges here. We got a rock face and a flat edge. We show that to our customers who are on the fence. We'll put this epoxy countertop technique on a board that has a flat edge and a rock edge. And then when we show that to our customer, they pick which edge they want. So pro tip guys, when you get your epoxy laid out, grab a torch, give it a quick little pass. That's gonna soften everything up. It'll liquefy that epoxy a little bit more, get it to flow. So we just poured out the three colors. They're all earth tones. They look pretty as it is. Now we're gonna meld these with our hands. Uh, as a team, the piece will all look pretty uniform because we're gonna keep that same flow. We're gonna make any dry areas wet. We'll hit our edges, and then it's time to add those accent colors. Wow, those colors. It's already real pretty. Thing is, those colors are so neutral that really could go with just about any decor. Really, you're right. Easily matched. That's a cool thing. Like we haven't even added our accent color. So let's say your customer has a specific color they really want to tie into their countertops. That's how easy it's going to be. We mix it up and add it in. Yesterday at Rhonda and Kinney's hands-on training class, you could sign up at rk3designs.com. Tons of epoxy classes. Go check them out. But you learn how to create actual countertops. You're going to learn how to seam. You're going to learn how to rock face edge. Bondo a straight edge. And this thing can be installed in a customer's home in a few days. So I'm just gonna tap out some of the surface tension in there. Yeah. All it takes is just a tap. If you see any dry areas, they'll automatically fill back in and then we'll get a torch on there, torch out them bubbles. This could be a finish all <laughs> on its own. But we're fixing to take this to the next level, guys. We all have our own flavor and style. Now it's time to take this to the next level. What color are you going with? a product from uh, Resin Art, Golden Autumn. Has a little bit of that, uh, almost an undertone of a reddish orange. And if anybody knows me, they oh. know I like bling. I pulled out a secret stash. It's gonna be my special sauce. I'm gonna come in with a red bronze glitter and also a chocolate truffle. Glitter from Just Resin, both are available on my website. I'm going with Color Obsession Reef Blue Shimmer. I cannot wait to see what this looks like in these earth tones. Keith, what you going with? I'm gonna go with another product by Just Resin. This is a paste. This is a peacock green. But on top of that, I have here a product called Silver Halo. Oh, that's Kenny's very favorite. So let's see what happens. Oh, uh, let's see what happens. Guys, 
You can get all of these products on my website, RK3 Designs. You can also check out all of these colors on artisttilldeath.com. Use coupon code RK3 to get a discount. So what I've done is I've mixed up my resin art. Look at that. But guys, if you know me, you know I like to bling up stuff. So I'm gonna come in here and get a tiny bit Ooh. of my book glitter mix. And I'm gonna add it in so I have just a little bit of that glitter peekabooing through. And then I'm probably gonna come back and add straight glitter. All right, so what I wanna do is I don't want this color to take over. So I'm just gonna very lightly add it ever so often. Some areas a little heavier, and I'll stop right there. And instead of using my hand, I wanna mm. add a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna drag my Bondo spreader through here. Now you can also do this with a stick, then I'm gonna come back and kind of melt it. But let me show you what's fun. If you come in here and start dragging this, and you twist and turn your Bondo spreader, you can really create some neat visuals. Now I don't wanna do this every single place because I can really get my design to be a little too busy. But I do wanna do it ever so often and just bring in that element of design. I like how that incorporates it. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And then you can also come back and kind of soften it out with your hands. Just adding a little bit of depth. Just kind of drag and twist, drag and twist. You know, the epoxy can sometimes, your best laid plan will go uh, start flowing the other way that you think. And so it's okay. You got to roll with it. Learn how to roll with those punches, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like one of my favorites is the isopropyl alcohol mist just right over the whole piece. So I'm going to try to miss this without hitting Keith's piece. The isopropyl alcohol gets in there and moves and opens up those different additives that we've all smeared together. Now look at that thing come to life. And I haven't even added my accent color. So that little step alone, folks, look at that. What's cool is a different reaction between where you have mm -hmm. the dyes and where you have mm -hmm. the mica powders. How they Correct. kind of fight with each other. Like that was a that lot was more boring before I hit a little bit right, of alcohol right. in that. Because I have chopped, I brought a few bubbles in. So I'm gonna hit it again with my torch. Then after that, I'm gonna let it sit a little bit before I put any of my bling. And the reason I'm gonna do that is my epoxy is very fresh. It's very fluid and it's moving. So if I come in and add my veins of glitter, my glitter is gonna sink. So I want my glitter to get a little thicker in the cup. I want my surface to get a little thicker. And then that way, when I come back with my glitter accents, it's gonna be a little more distinct. So I'm gonna come in and torch. Yeah, that's super pretty. So, all right, so our epoxy's been sitting about 20 minutes, I guess. And I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of my secret sauce, my bling. And just gonna run a vein. Now knowing that I'm still going to have this glitter probably fall through the epoxy and kind of sit, I kind of expect that. I don't want that bling to be so overwhelming. I kind of want it to fall through. All right, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of black. I want a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna come in very randomly. How random? Very random, so random. Just so dipping that right random. into the paint. Wow. Yep, I've just got it that into the paint. Amazing. And I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of black. And as soon as I add that black, I'm gonna add a little bit of alcohol. You're gonna see what that does to that vein. Just a little bit, just to add a little bit. Wow. Wow. Of extra design. Now, as Mitch spoke earlier, when you put alcohol over mica powder, you're really going to get some cool reactions. Not walking away. No, I was hoping. So I was hoping you do this. Black, fog it. and just kind of granify a couple of areas. That's awesome. That's an effect right here you can add to almost any piece yeah. to take it to the next level. And it's important when you add alcohol wow. that you have got to walk away and you have to let it 
do its own thing. If you add too much alcohol, you're gonna get runny effects. May have added a little bit too much there. I'm gonna walk away and let this dissipate a little bit and then we'll come back. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. Just like Rhonda, I'm only gonna use my accent in the specific spots. I'm not gonna dump a big amount of this. This is only an accent color to tie into my customer's uh, floor tile or whatever it may be that they're trying to match. So I just load up my stick and I'm drizzling it on. I'll come to that white vein and that cool Keith and then you take over the rest? Absolutely. All right, buddy. I can't wait to see what you have in your back pocket. I'm done. I'm gonna let that alcohol dissipate. So one thing you don't wanna do is pile on alcohol, well, tons of it. Give it a little mist, let it dissipate. You can always come back and miss it again. Look so at that's, that. So that's what's so important to know about this too with Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. You have, depending on your climate, your temperature, humidity, you're gonna have an hour and a half, two hours easily of working time. So I'm not in any big rush. I know I've got plenty of time to do what I wanna do. As the mica powder set, uh, the, the, the metallics will settle a little bit. Right now, I almost don't wanna do anything with that. Some of the cells that have created in there, that just really, really looks nice. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of alcohol on my hand, and I'm just gonna skim across this, and Ooh. I'm just gonna wake these mica powders up just a little bit. Now, really this is don't a wanna, technique I've never tried before. I haven't either. I really don't wanna pick up, and I really don't wanna move it around a lot, but look how it wakes those metallics up. It's cool. And a lot of times I'll wait 15 to 20 minutes before I take it to the next level, just so I get a chance to wake those metallics up just a little bit. Right. Then you gotta be careful if you heat it up too much, they're gonna settle back down again. All right, now I'm at to the point, I might miss a little more alcohol, but maybe I just make a little exotic pour vein to Ooh. tie in there, right? Just to show what that'd be, right? I have my Ooh. leftover material right here and start pouring it back into a larger cup. So I got a little white in there. I'm gonna add this, I forget which color this is, but I don't know. I'm gonna do this really quick, add a little bit of blue. And then when I go to pour these out, when I go to pour this out over the project, it does some pretty unique, cool, cool effects and it all lays out really neat. I've done, you can do entire countertops with nothing but this technique, but I'm just gonna build a small vein with it today. All right, so that's my little bucket of random colors. And I'm pinching my bucket down because I don't want to do too much. I'm going to let that self-level, wow. but I'm also going to hit it with a tiny bit of alcohol while that's doing that. So that's one way to add a super contrasting vein without dragging a stick through. And I think, folks, I am done. I'm, I'm just doing some experimenting. So I'm just going to get some clear alcohol on my hand. And then I have some hammered spray paints. And I'm going to take some black, some dark bronze. And let's just see what happens. I'm gonna try a little pearl mist in there too. You're just spraying right into the hand. Yeah, I've Ooh. got epoxy on my hand. Gloved hand. You kind of lubed it up with some epoxy and... Yeah. So this is my green that we added that silver halo to. Huh. I just have one area in here that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to granify just a little bit. So just kind of lightly spray some right in there. Pretty. And we'll just let that go for a little bit. All right, my favorite part of the project, truthfully, is Rhonda's bling she added. That is blingy, but it doesn't overpower, and it exactly. goes with that red. Go so back. that is very beautiful, and I love how that goes over the edge. You took the time to make sure that goes over there. That's gonna catch your eye walking in the kitchen. Absolutely. That's my favorite part of this project. What about you, Rhonda? One of my favorite things, and I try to really teach our students this, is I didn't use any expensive tools here. I okay. used my hand and a Bondo spreader. <laughs> and so you can create such beautiful finishes with very, very simple tools. What about you, Keith? Yeah, my biggest takeaway is we all use the same colors with the exception of our accent colors and what you can create and, and the amount of time that you have to create a beautiful piece like this. It just, it, it amazes me.
fantastic work, you guys. Absolutely. And from stunt, wait. Okay, make sample boards first. Now you do your clothes, and then we'll do the whole thing. How All about, right, cool. I hope you guys had as much fun as we did. Man, I had a lot of fun with this. No, I'm saying what you say to the camera. But I'm telling that to right. you right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what do you think? Did we, like, just knock it out of the park? Uh, we did, and again, I learned from you, and I learned from Keith, and I've done Likewise. thousands of countertops. You don't stop learning when you work with when you're working with resin. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check us out rk3designs.com, also on Facebook and YouTube. Until next week, remember: don't be scared, move forward, and be creative. Super creative. <laughs>